Well, in this session, we're going to get into the book of Tobit. Now, the book of Tobit is not found in a lot of the Protestant Bibles today. But the book of Tobit is found in all of the Orthodox Church Bibles and also the Catholic Bible. So uh, it's, very, it's a very significant book, and every believer should know the book of Tobit. Tobit is considered scripture by a good portion of the Christian church. So let's get into this. The book of Tobit, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the words of Tobit, the son of Tobiel, the son of Ananiel, the son of Aduel, the son of Gabael, of the seed of Asiel, of the tribe of Naphtali, who in the days of Anamassar, king of the Assyrians, was carried away captive out of Thisbe, which is on the right hand of Kadesh, Naphtali, in Galilee above Asher. I, Tobit, walked in the ways of truth and righteousness all the days of my life, and I did many alms deeds to my kindred and my nation, who went with me into the land of the Assyrians, to Nineveh. When I was in my own country, in the land of Israel, while I was yet young, all the tribe of Naphtali, my father, fell away from the house of Jerusalem. I'm just going to stop here for a second. For those of you who are not familiar with the way I'm reading this, I am applying at least some of the original Hebrew pronunciation of these words. You know, these words obviously are Hebrew words, and and uh, this is assumedly a, a, a Hebrew speaking Hebrew. So let's uh, let's try to keep it as as Hebrew as 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 we can here. So Jerusalem is Yerushalayim. Let me just go back here a step. When I was in my own country, in the land of Israel, while I was yet young, all the tribe of Naphtali, my father, fell away from the house of Yerushalayim, which was chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, that, that all the tribes should sacrifice there, and that the temple of the habitation of the Most High was hallowed, or holy, and built therein for all ages." All the tribes which fell away together sacrificed to the heifer Baal, and so did the, ho the house of Naphtali, my father. Let me just stop here for a second. Now, the word Baal, or Baal, uh, is, is a word that just means Lord, okay? Now, if you, if you think about this, um, put some thought into it. Now, the scriptures speak a lot about Baal, or Baal, as some people call this god, Baal, Baal, Baal. And it's, you know, it makes you wonder how these people, the people of God, the people of the Bible, I mean, here we are, you know, thousands of years after the fact, but there they are living right there in Bible times, so to speak, in the times when, you know, we read in the scriptures how God moved mightily, yet they worshiped Baal, Baal. So you wonder, how did they get, how did they come to this point? How did this happen? And so um, I know, you know, a lot of this could be considered to be speculation, but hey, how can somebody who is deeply religious, deep, I mean, these people were like one of the most, if not the most religious people on the planet. How can they fall away from worshiping the true God into worshiping Baal? Now, I think that Baal was a God who, well, again, the word means Lord. And so, you know, how, how many people today uh, call God Lord, which, I mean, I'm not, it's not wrong in doing so, but, um, I mean, Lord comes from two old English words, which uh, loaf ward or loaf warden, you know, so the first two letters of loaf and the first or the last two letters of ward uh, is Lord. 
Uh, so yes, uh, you know, God can be our loaf warden, you know, the one who feeds us, the one who provides for us. But um, you see now, Baal, Baal was worshipped so much by so many people. Now it makes you wonder if Baal was portrayed to be the true God of Israel. You know, that somehow they fell away from the real true God of Israel and they somehow got very subtly but very seriously deceived into worshiping a fake God, a fake conception of God. Um, and so, I mean, that's just a... That's just something to think about. Um, you know, we can talk a lot about that, but um, I just want to, I just want to say that and just, uh, just say, you know, encourage you. Think about this for a little bit. Think about this. You know, Baal, Lord. So Tobit goes on in verse six. I alone went often to Jerusalem at the feasts, as it has been ordained to all Israel. By an everlasting decree. Once again, we got the word everlasting here. Everlasting decree. Um, and this is what I say a lot. I say, you know, the, the law of God, or the instructions, the guidelines that God gives us. There are a lot of people in this world today thinks you know they they think that it's irrelevant. They think that it's outdated. They think that Jesus came to change it. But how can he? According to Deuteronomy, if anyone changes it, they are guilty of a grave sin. And if Jesus changed it in any way, he is a lawbreaker. He's a sinner, not a savior. So I don't believe that Jesus changed it at all. You know, in fact, 23 times we see in uh, the Torah um, the words everlasting, forever you know, uh, to all generations, perpetual, uh, all this kind of stuff. And here again, we see it in the book of Tobit. Uh, you know, he confirms that, uh, you know, the feast, which is part of the Torah, uh, obviously, uh, has been ordained to all Israel by an everlasting decree. Having the first fruits and the tenths of my increase, the tenths being the tithes, and that which was f first shorn, and, and gave them at the altar to the priests, the sons of Aaron, Aharon. I gave a tenth part of all my incense to the sons of Levi, who ministered at Jerusalem. A second tenth part is sold away and went and spent and spent it each year at Jerusalem. A, th a, th a third tenth I gave to them to whom it was appropriate, as Deborah, my father's mother, had commanded me, because I was left an orphan, an orphan by my father. So let me go back here. Here we got um, three tenths. This is 30%. Now, I know you look at a lot of the so-called celebrity Christians, celebrity preachers out there, the, 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 you know, the celebrity ones that have, you know, so many followers and, you know, that's so much not like uh, what you read in the Bible. However, you know, they preach a lot about the tithe and, and giving 10%. Well, really, if you, if you really read the Bible, you really understand it. There were three tithes. That would be 30%. Uh, to be precise, uh, some people uh, would say it's uh, 23 and a third percent because we got two tithes, which makes 20 percent, and one tithe that was ev once every three years, which kind of, ma kind of makes it like a third of a tithe. But, I mean, let's not get into too much of the details right now about that. But, uh, you know, this is, a, again, this, this is a, something that we shouldn't just skim over. I mean, let's... You know, let's, we'll read this, we'll understand this. There's more than just 10% to the tithe uh, of, the, of the scriptures. Verse 9. When I became a man, I took as wife Anna of the seed of our own family. 
With her, I became the father of Tobias. So we got Tobit, his wife Anna, which was of his own family, which, you know, I mean, could have been a cousin, distant cousin, somewhere in the so-called maybe race. I hate to use that word um, because I, you know, I believe in one race and that's the human race, but uh, uh, the human race divided into families. So um, we got Tobit, his wife, Anna, and his son, Tobias, or Tobias. Verse 10, when I was carried away captive to Nineveh, all my kindred and my relatives ate of the bread of the Gentiles. They ate of food of the non-Jewish people. But I kept myself from eating because I remembered God with all my soul. So the Most High gave me grace and favor in the sight of Anamassar, and I was his purchasing agent. So this is, you know, getting more detail here. Tobit was the purchasing agent of Anamassar. And he says, uh, I went into Media, which is a place. You know, today we think of Media as... Uh, you know, uh, internet and TV or, you know, uh, news news outlets and such. But this is a actual place. Uh, I went into media and left 10 talents of silver. A talent is something like 60 some odd pounds. 10 talents of silver. That's a lot of silver. In trust with Gabael, the brother of Gabrias, at Rages of Media. Again, this is a place. It sounds like quite a quite a name, isn't it? Rages of Media. And when NMSR was dead, Sennacherib, his son, reigned in his place. In his time, the highways were troubled. Here we got a little double cross. Let's look at the bottom of the screen and see what that means. Uh, his highways, his highways were troubled in the Greek. Uh, so it says here, the highways were troubled. And I could no longer go into media. In the days of Enemesar, I did my alms deeds to my kindred. I gave my bread to the hungry and my garments to the naked. I mean, this is a good man, right? If there ever is a good man. I mean, it sounds like someone that would be uh, a candidate for that. If I saw any of my race dead... And thrown out on the wall of Nineveh, I buried him. Again, here we got this little sum, symbol. What's this talking about here? Some ancient authorities read behind. So thrown out behind the wall of, Ni of Nineveh, or on the wall of Ninia, Nineveh, excuse me, I buried him. So he was very kind to everybody. If Sennacherib the king killed any, when he came fleeing from Judea, Again, I'm pronouncing this uh, from a, an ancient, a, I should say, more of an ancient way of pronouncing things because, you know, back in those days, the, 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 the J sound, as in J, uh, did not exist. It was a Ya, ya Yahuda, that would be Judah, or Judea. I buried them privately, for in his wrath he killed many. Uh, excuse me here. If Sennacherib the king killed any, when he came fleeing from Judea, I buried him privately, for in his wrath he killed many. And the bodies were sought for by the king and were not found. But one of the Ninevites went and showed to the king concerning me how I buried them. You know, there's always... <laughs> You know, here we got somebody here, Tobit, who's uh, who's being uh, reported upon, reported upon. Um, so someone went to Sennacherib and told uh, Sennacherib about Tobit burying these bodies, and uh, and hid myself, and w and when I knew that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. He's pretty honest here. And all my goods were forcibly taken away, and there was nothing left to me save my wife 
Anna and my son Tobias. He lost everything except for his wife and his son. Well, you know, that's pretty much some of the most uh, valuable, valuable things you could ever have. Uh, things, persons, uh, a lot more valuable than any money or any material things is, is your family. So he had his family. No more than five, 55 days passed before two of his sons killed him. And they fled into the mountains of Ararat. And Sarco, uh, excuse me, Sarcadonus, a little asterisk here. Let's read what it says on the bottom. Sarcadonus, that is Esarhaddon, or Esarhaddon. Uh, and so in verse 22, Esarhaddon. Another name, I suppose. Uh, and so Sarcadonus, his son, reigned in his place. And he appointed Achiacharus, Achia, Achia my brother, Anael's son, over all the accounts of his kingdom and over all his affairs. Achiacharus requested me, and I called for him, and I came to Nineveh. Now, Achiacharus was cupbearer, keeper of the signet, steward, and overseer of the accounts. Sarcadonus appointed him next to himself, but he was my brother's son, his nephew. And uh, in the next session, we're going to get into chapter 2. So.